for uh, the past 18 months, um, I was filming a show called Pro Side List, which is an engineering show for Discovery Channel. Um, and uh, we used a bunch of parallax stuff on the show. Um, and really, it was, it, it was an attempt to, to kind of spread uh, my love of engineering and spread just the, the engineering process to the masses. Um, and I think it worked pretty well. So this, this presentation um, doesn't have anything to do with propeller. Um, but it has a lot to do with parallax and just a lot to do with the TV show and just kind of the, the challenges and the fun that went along with that. So I'm going to run through like a bunch of projects and then um, you guys can ask questions afterwards. Okay, so for those who don't know, um, Prototype This was a, uh, an engineering show uh, for Discovery Channel made by the same production company as Mythbusters. Um, it's a different world. Being technical, going into that world is very, very different. Um, so the real challenge was how to get engineering looking fun, how to, how to make it cool, how to show that what we were doing was actually difficult. Because we were four guys building prototypes of crazy things. We had two weeks to do it, usually only around $10,000 for a build budget, which isn't a lot when you end up spending most of it on steel. Um, so thankfully for Parallax, you know, they would end up sending us everything we needed for free. Uh, which is helpful. And that's actually how a lot of TV shows get by. Um, so we tried to follow the true design process of engineering. I put true in quotes because uh, nothing on TV is actually real. Um, but some of the, the full testing we did was real because the failures were real and when things broke, that obviously wasn't fake. But uh, you know, we had our concept meeting at first to come up with the idea and stuff like that. A lot of that was planned because we obviously needed to know what we were building before the cameras got there. Um, so the show premiered October 2008. Um, we filmed 13 episodes for the season. Um, one million viewers per episode in the U.S. is what they told us, which I think is pretty good. Um, and I'd say probably 99.9% .9 of those people have never been exposed to engineering before. Um, and I, I, I still get emails to this day from people that, that have seen the show and they're like, oh man, engineering is so cool, how do you get into it? Where do I go to learn more about it? What do I do? And you know, I point them to, to the Parallax forums, I point them to Nuts and Bolts, and all these, all these resources that all of us know about. Um, so it ends cool. So I think we're going to see a lot more engineers. We did one season, the show did not get picked up again um, because Discovery said it was too expensive and took too long to produce. Um, which I'm sure you guys have all, being engineers, I'm sure you've all heard that before. But everybody <laughs> wants stuff done right away and, and for as cheap as possible. Um, they do have the website still. There's four of us. That was the hardware guy. Zaz did most of the software programming, the higher level um, intelligent routines. And then we had Mike North, who was. Uh, our, our pretty boy slash mechanical engineer. Uh, and then we had Terry Sandin, who, who specialized in special effects. He was uh, uh, he does special effects for a bunch of Hollywood movies. He was our machinist. Um, so it worked out well. And, and, and we couldn't obviously do this without the help of other people. So we had friends come on the show, um, various expert builders and people that you know we thought would be helpful and could show off some sort of talent. And, and the problem with TV a lot of times is we'll bring people on and they, they will never get any airtime. And that was always hard for me because I always want to you know, give credit where credit's due and say, oh yeah, all these guys helped us. Like in the water slide episode, I'll show you pictures of that. The, all those guys up there basically got 30 seconds of screen time and they worked for five weeks welding. Um, so it seemed a little unbalanced, but I guess that's just the way TV is. So we built stuff like this, 10 foot giant boxing robots that would um, move based on the uh, movements of players outside the ring using um, optical glyph tracking. We had um, glyphs on the player's back so it, uh, and webcams to capture their side-to-side, -side, front and back movements. Um, accelerometers and the boxing gloves, wireless accelerometers to, to track all the punches. Right. Um, so here's a picture of the uh, boxing robot. So for this we had, this was like before we had all the audience in, we set up a, uh, a boxing match which was me against this um, four foot tall Golden Gloves national champion uh, woman um, who gave me a bloody nose in real life when we were learning how to box. So it's sort of a natural, I'm gonna, you know, let's have a boxing match in my turf with robots and everything. And, yeah, I kicked her butt. Um, but those are the robots in there. Um, demolition Derby up here, we called it Anger Management Demolition Derby, which was, uh, Basically, yeah, mind control to start up the cars, and then we're using um, PlayStation 2 driving controllers through a bunch of BS2 stuff um, to remotely control the, the cars back here. With the six-legged um, all-terrain robot, we Mike had to create these custom um, carbon fiber legs that would that needed certain flexibility, but they had to be rigid in certain directions. Um, so he designed this leg and needed a way to show how strong they were, like to visually show to somebody. So he made this demonstration of of basically riding a a, uh, a leg, uh, which worked great. 
Um, but this is what happens when it doesn't work great. So here's the leg in here. <laughs> So the leg worked great. He actually was riding for 10 or 15 minutes beforehand, and then at that point, the wood just gave way. I think that might have been the only episode that we failed. That was a really difficult one, and we actually spent, I think, four weeks initially to get it working, and we had the thing stand up, and we were blowing out motor controllers and motors, and then um, we had to mothball it for a little while, do another episode, and then Discovery gave us more money to try it again, and we failed again. Um, so it was hard, and Discovery freaked out, and, and the producers freaked out when we failed. They're like, oh my god, what are we going to do? How are we going to show this on TV? You guys are supposed to succeed every time. And we're like, no, engineers don't succeed all the time. <laughs> and um, you know, they, and, and they, they were freaked, but then they started editing the show together, and they're like, wow, that actually works. You know, you guys look, you guys look real. You failed. And we're like, I know. So, they actually learned something there, and that was cool, because a lot of the show was, was an educational process for every all the production staff. So that was really cool for them to say, oh yeah, I guess you, know, you can't get everything to work. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the water slide simulator, 30 feet tall. Uh, but this was a serious mechanical engineering challenge. But what was actually funny about that is they took one shot of me cutting some steel, which I never do, and they use that in the show. They're like, well, Joe prepares the steel. <laughs> <laughs> So here everybody thinks I'm like really talented man or something. This is a video of the whole water slide simulator actually running. And it's loud. It sounds like a subway train going right by you. And the whole it's all hy hy um, hydraulics um, and uh, I can't remember the actual hydraulic controller that we used, but this guy here, Dennis, was from that company and had to fine tune everything. Here's a video of inside. And there's a pool of water, you're riding in the inner tube, you actually feel like you're riding. And it can go up, down, left, right, speed up, slow down. Here's the course. Um, you know, most water slides, that's the course. Most water slides are like a, what, a 30 second ride. This thing lasted three minutes. And I think had a, a vertical drop of like 30,000 feet or something like that. But it worked great, I mean, it really felt, it really felt amazing. So while the cameras were on, obviously we had to you know, ride it forwards, but as soon as everyone left, we were riding backwards and upside down, and clothing optional sort of thing. And it was really, all our friends came over to ride it. So this was part of our um, Gecko Man episode, which was trying to create a, uh, a, a method to climb up vertical surfaces, either a rough vertical surface or a smooth vertical surface. Um, and Terry didn't have much to do on that build, so he decided to do some experiments with suction cups. And this was a cathartic experience, let me tell you. So we started, you know, kind of slow, slamming the wall to see if he'd stick. And it just got out of hand. <laughs> Eventually the camera stopped and we just kept whipping him into the... It's funny because everybody, everybody was really enjoying that. And they're pretty, not Terry. Everyone was, I mean, the producers were crying and they're like, oh, shit, you guys should stop, really. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we had to build a lot of stuff um, with not a lot of money and not a lot of time. And I think a lot of people who, who see the TV shows just sort of assume that it's like, you know, they kind of do stuff whenever they want and they have all this money and they get paid a lot of money to do stuff. And, um, it's not really true. The producer probably paid a lot of money, but we didn't. So Discovery, the Discovery Store also sells a, a four-disc DVD set of the show of all 13 episodes. So you can get them on iTunes and you can get that. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, thanks.